Happy Sabbath. Let's believe and pray before we do the health nugget for this morning. Jesus, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your holy Sabbath day. And we thank you, Lord, because of this health nugget. As we're going to learn about breastfeeding this morning, I'm praying that Jesus, you shall come down and be in our midst. Be with us now until the end. For we pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Um, happy Sabbath once more. So, my name is Dr. Beatrice Kiage, and I'm the one taking you through the health nugget this morning. And um, as uh, some of you may be aware, this is the breastfeeding month. And sometimes we forget about breastfeeding. And that is where very important nourishing begins from. And that is where you find that apart from the womb, that is where again things go wrong. And this being a church with um, a youth congregation of about 75%, I know that breastfeeding is very important. The people who are past that, they may be wondering, why are we talking about breastfeeding? You need to talk about breastfeeding and we need to support it. And why I'm here to talk about breastfeeding this morning is because I would really wish to see this church having a breastfeeding room someday, where it is supporting mothers. So as we are supporting breastfeeding at the workplaces, we want to see mothers being um, uh, supported to breastfeed their infants here in this church comfortably as they also worship. So this morning, my topic is about nourishing with love. Breastfeeding is about nourishing with love. So we are looking at the power of breastfeeding. So um, uh, what we recommend, um, if I could quote what the American Academy of Pediatrics talks about breastfeeding, babies should be breastfed and receive or, or and, ex, and, and receive breast, expressed breast milk exclusively for the first six months of life. What do I, why am I talking about exclusively? Meaning, no light porridges, you know, no soups here and there, just mother's milk. No water. Breast milk has sufficient water for your baby. So if you think it's too hot, your baby needs water, and your baby is under six months, please give that baby the breast. And this should continue with the addition of complementary foods throughout the second half of the first year, meaning that when the baby reaches six months, then onwards up to two years or beyond, then they can receive complementary foods. Why am I talking about not, why am I talking about complementary and not winning? Most people here talk about winning. We are not winning. Winning is total cessation of breastfeeding. Okay? So I hope that if you're in this congregation, you'll be talking about complementary feeding and meaning we are complementary, well, we are complementing breast milk. Okay? So it doesn't mean that at six months you're like, oh, now I'm, I can leave the breast and start giving the porridge, the ugali. No. Continue giving the breast as you are complementing it with your, uh, with other things. And, um, um, the Ministry of Healing, page 383, Ellen G. White says, the best food for the infant is the food that nature provides. Breast milk is free. Nature provides that. Of this, it should not be needlessly deprived. It is a heartless thing for a mother for the sake of convenience or social enjoyment to seek to free herself from the tender office of nursing her little one. I know some people are saying maybe someone is, has, is HIV positive, there are guidelines, and you can still breastfeed your child. So I know this is a problem with the young mothers because they, they don't want to breastfeed. No, it is inconveniencing. Once you decide to become a parent, it is a noble responsibility. Please do not deny that child that very important food for them in life. 
Now, um, as I already said, breastfeeding is the natural and best way to provide nutrition to an infant. Okay? And there are numerous advantages to giving your baby uh, breast milk. And these advantages, they are not only to the baby. They are also for the mother. Because sometimes, even the society, we are going to see that later on. Because sometimes people think, ah, oh, it's just the baby who's benefiting. But today, I'm here to tell you that as a mother, as a young mother, or as an aspiring mother, breast milk is important for you, and it's important for your baby too. Okay? And um, when we look at the trends of breastfeeding in Kenya, we were doing very badly in the past, in the 80s. Because what happened, the breast milk um, substitute companies came in and they advertise their products and they put them look very nice so mothers dished breastfeeding okay then you realize there were a lot there were a lot of problems with the babies so what happens campaigns came around who came on board and they were advocating for breastfeeding so we have been having an upward trend in breastfeeding we look at kenya from the year 2008 we started at around 32 percent and we are now um, in 2014, we were 61%, but now we are about 60%. Okay, no, dif no statistical difference, but that tells you again, we should be able to tell people about breastfeeding, because why are we not reaching the target of WHO of 80%? I wish it could even be 100%, because breast milk is very, very important for our babies, and even for us. So let us start by looking at what benefits breast milk has for the child. The first thing is that um, breast milk provides what we call optimal nutrition and this is because it has all the essential nutrients that a child requires. If you're talking about vitamins, minerals, everything else, the carbohydrates, the proteins, all that is contained in breast milk. So it is a wholesome food for the baby. Apart from that, it also contains what we call antibodies that protect our babies against infection and also promote their healthy growth. We all want our babies to be healthy, not every time we're running into hospital because we could have, you know, we, we deprive them of breast milk. And then sometimes, you know, you find, you know, especially the young mothers, the mothers in the cities, they have those beautiful bottles, they think it's more juicy to do that please just give that baby your breast and that means that when you're breastfeeding put on appropriate clothing that you can give that baby the breast okay these other clothes you can pick them up after you are done with breastfeeding okay the other thing is um breastfeeding reduces the risk of diseases for the babies because they are at a lower risk of getting what we call respiratory tract infections um, things to do with the gastrointestinal system, no diarrhea and all that, allergies, obesity, chronic diseases. And what you need to know is that as the baby grows, breast milk adjusts, okay? So what we call mature milk is different from the one that maybe, you know, like at the beginning when the baby is born, it's different. So as the baby grows, the milk adjusts to meet the needs of that growing baby. And one thing you need to know, you should not say that you cannot breastfeed your child. Breastfeeding, the body works on demand and supply basis. The more you breastfeed, the more milk comes. So as a mother, feed and breastfeed that child. The less you breastfeed, the less milk comes. Then also the other benefit is um, cognitive development. Breast milk is very important to support the baby's brain development. And it has actually been found that babies who are breastfed have a higher IQ compared to the other babies who have not been breastfed. So please, if you want your baby to have a higher IQ, breastfeed that baby. I am talking that from experience. I am a mother of three, a college going, high school, and grade two now. I have done exclusive breastfeeding for all my children. And I thank God, I think their IQ is good. Okay. Benefit to the mother, okay? What benefits are there of breastfeeding to the mother? There's bonding and emotional connection, okay? You want to bond with your child. So breastfeeding promotes a strong emotional bond 
between the mother and the child. No, you want to be, you know, as you're growing old, you don't want your child to dump you in a nursing home. But if you don't breastfeed your baby, they will dump you in a nursing home. Or when you're sick, they will send you m -Pesa. Okay? Then also it aids in um, postpartum recovery, meaning that breastfeeding is able to, re uh, to release um, a certain kind of hormone that we call oxytocin, and this helps in the contraction of the, of the uterus and also helps the mother's body go back to its former position after delivery, okay? And also, there is a small benefit also of, um, of uh, family planning, but don't depend on it fully, okay? But do exclusive breastfeeding. Then also reduce risk of diseases later on in life, and this is for the mother. Breastfeeding can actually protect the mothers against breast cancer, osteoporosis, ovarian cancer, what you call metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular diseases, and also type 2 diabetes. And this is according to the American Heart Association. So please make sure as mothers, you're not only benefiting that child, even you as a mother, you are benefiting. And mothers need to be supported to breastfeed. So aunties who are here, husbands, grandmothers, grandfathers, and even the church need to support our mothers to breastfeed. And then we have long-term health impacts of breastfeeding for both the child and the mother. For the child, of course, it helps them to have a healthy weight, protects them from all those diseases that we have talked about. And for the mother, of course, we have also talked about decreased risk of osteoporosis, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, among others. So please make sure that as a church, we are promoting uh, breastfeeding and we are supporting mothers. And that is why I'm hoping that the, the pastor is hearing me and the church elder is hearing me that they are going to make a room for mothers to breastfeed. For the society, it is cost effective because breast milk is free. There's no money you pay for it. It is eco-friendly. So we don't spend money doing packaging, all that. So that can... Uh, it's not environmental friendly. And also, breastfeeding uh, will actually make sure that we have happier mothers, happier employees, and of course, our economy will grow. And uh, just to finish, I'd like to thank you for deciding to breastfeed. The mothers who are here today and you're breastfeeding, you are doing exclusive breastfeeding or going to do that, I want to thank you for deciding to do that. You're doing the right thing for yourself and the right thing for your child. So together, let's continue to support and promote this beautiful journey of breastfeeding for a healthier world and, of course, a healthier church. So thank you so much, and I hope that we are all going to support breastfeeding.